It's day five of living with HIV and my mom's taking me on a shopping spree because I'm sad. Hello, how are you all? I am wonderful, thanks for asking. But today I went on Twitter, which tends to make things a little bit more wonderful in general. So one of the things that Twitter is complaining about today is a TikToker called Zach Wilmore. And the reason that they don't like him is because of some of the stuff he's been posting lately since he got diagnosed with HIV. So before I actually tell you exactly what he says in his TikToks, and before I show you his TikToks, I wanna take you on the same journey that I went on today. So imagine me in the morning drinking my coffee and I open Twitter for some reason and I read this. Bro thinks HIV is cute and makes him unique. Gen Z is so confused, WTF. Do not know who Elijah Schaefer is, but they are, I was gonna say monetized. <laughs> they are verified. So they might be somebody or they might pay $8 a month to Elon Musk. One of those options. But Elijah did do me the favor of posting the entire TikTok here. And this is the one that they're talking about. It's officially been one whole week of me living with HIV and my first day on medicine. I felt sadder than I have Weeks. Seriously, my energy is back. I feel more like myself. I also officially know the person who gave it to me. Um, I'm not mad at all. It's just he didn't know. He didn't get tested in time, and that's why I have it now. As you guys can see, I went to the doctors again today, and they redid all my blood work. Needles are like one of my biggest fears. I hated it. But as long as I can get back to myself, I'm not mad. Lastly, before I got off to dinner, one of my big things on my bucket list was to have a blood pact with some of my friends. And I was like, oh, now that I have HIV, I'll never be able to do that. But I asked my doctor, and he was like, even though I really highly don't recommend it because of a number of other reasons, technically HIV is not the problem there. And I was like, yay! Only not the problem when I'm fully undetectable, which will be for a while, but I don't care. Also, he needs more information, but whatever. I love you guys so much. This is the win. After this, I somehow immediately saw another tweet about this whole thing without even going out to search for it, by the way. I don't see things and immediately go look for other things because I have the attention span of a teaspoon, so I forget at that point. But somehow immediately after that, I got another one of these saying, you were born too late to explore the stars to Earth. That is not what that says. <laughs> Let me try that again. You were born too late to explore the Earth, too early to explore the stars, but just in time to see Zoomers vlog their HIV diagnosis. And here's the TikTok that was shared under that one. It's day five of living with HIV, and my mom's taking me on a shopping spree because I'm sad. We stopped at Zara. Look at how cute this is. I totally forgot to film the rest, but we went to dinner and it was obviously delicious. Here's the haul. I got some cute jeans, and my sleeping tops all got stolen when I was doing laundry, so I got a new one. I also got this cute lemon wrapped off. I'm going to Greece this summer. I'm going to mama me of that shit. I'm going to be so cute. I know that's not why y'all are here. So I got the test results today. Um, my viral load is low. My CV4 and CV8 are also pretty normal. So I don't have a severe case of it, but I'll get more information tomorrow out of my appointment. I'm sorry. I don't have any more information right now, but the point is it's manageable. I, it's hard for me to make these videos because when I think about it in depth, it really makes me sick to my stomach. Like I do things like shopping or hanging out with my friends to distract myself, but that's besides the point. I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. So I don't think I need to do much explaining as to what they're actually complaining about here. They're pretty upset that there is a younger person who has a diagnosis of something terrible, HIV, and is then sharing that on TikTok, vlogging the experience and seeming pretty upbeat and positive in some ways. And sure, I can see that argument. And a lot of the time on stuff on TikTok, you know, I would make the same argument. Things get romanticized on TikTok a lot. Mental illness is one of the big offenders for romanticization on TikTok. Of course, of course, don't get me wrong. There is a place for spreading awareness and all of that. But if you know, you know, there's stuff that takes too far and is definitely not spreading awareness or helping or educating or just being like a normal amount of positive. It is romanticization and I'm not gonna pretend that it's not. But this video is not about that. This video is about this situation. And in this situation, I do have a few thoughts. Before I move on to my thoughts though, please subscribe because I didn't say it at the beginning of the video and I would really appreciate it if you do that. It really does help me out a lot. Thank you very much. For those of you who might be new here, my videos are normally a little bit more edited than this, but I have a shoulder injury at the moment and I can't edit very well. Uh, I can't really edit at all, to be honest with you. So um, this is a much more stripped down version of my usual content. So things will be much more edited in the future. But anyway, back to this situation. So I understand the argument being made um, against this. However, I, I fully don't agree. And I find it hard to sit here and present both sides equally when I think the other side 
is more important. And that is the side of spreading awareness about HIV. Because yes, we all know what HIV is. At least we think we know what it is. Um, and we all at least have a vague idea of what happened in the 80s. With the LGBT community, there was a whole AIDS epidemic and it was awful. And I don't know if people fully know how awful it was. And I, I don't even know if you can know how awful it was without being there. Um, clearly, I wasn't there. So uh, everything I know is from second, third hand experience. I wasn't there and I can never know how awful it was. But from what I've heard, it was terrible. Everybody in the LGBT community was at risk. Nobody seemed to care that AIDS was spreading because really it was just seen as something that was affecting the gays and who cares about them, right? So nobody seemed to care. People were getting sick at a really rapid rate and people were dying at a really rapid rate. I don't think there's anybody who was in these communities during the 80s and during that time who doesn't know somebody who died from AIDS. Uh, or at least one person and they probably knew multiple people. Like their closest friends, people that they would consider family and maybe even their family as well, their blood family, were dying rapidly and nobody seemed to care and nobody really understood the illness at the time. Um, it was seen as something dirty, people didn't fully grasp how it spread, like you didn't want to go near somebody who had AIDS or HIV because like what if you get it and then you're gonna die? And at the time as well, the worst part of all of this, maybe not the worst part, but one of the worst parts, because it was all just equally terrible, is that if you were diagnosed, it was essentially a death sentence. And here's where the problem lies today in that a lot of people don't understand that that's not the case anymore. There have now been decades of research done into HIV and its treatment. And at this point, if you get to it early enough, it's not a death sentence anymore. It is something that you can absolutely live with. It's absolutely manageable. And I'm saying that while keep in mind that I am not a doctor. I have no medical background, nor do I have HIV. This is just stuff that I know from reading about this. Um, not a medical professional just need to say that, so always listen to medical professionals above me, please. Thank you. But nowadays it is treatable and it is manageable and there's medications you can get so, again, that you're not going to drop dead from it and as well so that you can't transmit it to other people. And I think it's important that this is being shared so that people can understand this because there is still a huge stigma around it and a lot of that does come from the 80s because people still don't understand it. They think if you have HIV, you're going to die and you're going to spread it to everybody around you just by breathing, which is not the case at all. And if you look at this guy's TikToks at Zach Wilmore's, I was gonna call him Zachary <laughs> for some reason, at Zach Wilmore's TikToks, he is talking about his process of getting the treatment and what that means and I think it's important to share that because there are other people with this who are dealing with it who are scared and likewise there are people who might know somebody and might need to understand and I mean as well you could see on the first day and days after that that you know he was upset about it you're not gonna not be upset about that and clearly he was but the thing is he does tend to get a bit more positive after that and maybe that's just his personality maybe that's the way he deals with things and as well as that he's talking about how he knows it's going to be manageable and that's something really important i mean with the medicine that we have today although it's not fully curable in people it is manageable and you can live a full normal life with it and so what else is he to do but take his medication and live a full and normal life? I just think it's a little bit weird that people are so upset about it. And again, I do understand it is a little bit like you see HIV and shopping spree in the same thing and you might be like, oh my god, this is the TikTok people doing it again. I just don't think it's a case of the TikTok people doing it again. I do truly think that it's important for people to understand that your life is not going to end either literally or figuratively, because you have a diagnosis of HIV. Personally, I fully support 
Zach, who I keep wanting to call Zachary for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why, but maybe you have a completely different opinion and feel free to let me know in the comments what your opinions are. Um, just be respectful, please. No being mean to each other in the comments because I know this might be a bit of a heated discussion, but be nice to each other, that is all. But besides that, do let me know in the comments as well how your day is going, how your week is going. I would love to know. Yes, my voice did just break there, but we're going to ignore it. We're going to move on. And you know why we're going to ignore it and move on? Because I can't edit properly. <laughs> Great, thank you. Anyway, yeah, do subscribe for more. And again, there will be better videos in the future and more frequent videos in the future. It is just hard for me to get stuff out at the moment. But, you know, if you want to keep up with me beyond YouTube, you can follow me on social media. I'm Vangelina Scott everywhere. Really appreciate it if you do that. Also, turn on all notifications. And I'm sure there's other things I'm supposed to ask you to do at the end of the video, but I've forgotten what they are. Check out wildtunta.com. Linked in the description. <laughs> like, comment, share. Do all the things that I'm supposed to ask you to do at the end of the video. And have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.